Hello, dear fellows. I'm Frederick Fui, a researcher from the TUI and Hofen, the Netherlands. It's been a great honor to be here to present our recent work. Today, I will talk about the fundamental and application aspects of adsorption thermal battery, especially those scenarios involving with low grade heat sources. We will focus on utilizing some new solvents materials, metal organic frameworks. I will split the talk into three parts. I will firstly present some background about what is option using these materials. I will show how to evaluate the performance of a thermal battery based on a view of science of engineering. At the end, I'll speak about the implementation of the technology in a built environment. So MOFs are hybrid solid porous materials. These materials can absorb different gases due to their noble molecular structure. They are composed of an uh, organic linker and a metal cluster with infinite topologies. There have been more than 90,000 MOFs discovered or developed by the chemists today. Water absorption is a recent hot topic in the research community, and it seems to let us see the possible game changing solution to some grand thermal challenges. People realize that water can be directly linked to energy due to the large absorption energy. As common sense, the energy released by absorbing some vapor can hit the same quantity of water from zero degree to 100 degrees. So the process reveals the possibility to apply the new materials to all existing technology based on some energy storage and transport, including drying, heating and cooling, water producing, etc. As you can see, the materials are discovered less than three decades ago, and it is now a large branch in both fundamental chemistry and environmental science. Fortunately, after 20 years of efforts, several companies and establishments over the world can now mass produce some MOFs which lays the foundation of our activities. I am one of those people who believes this field will contribute to shaping the future of our energy industry. So I engaged myself into this subject and it is why I'm bringing this subject to the symposium at MIT, looking for potential large deployment of the technology in the near future. The principle of the absorption machine is rather simple. We have a higher temperature source that inputs energy, and at a low temperature, we obtain a cooling effect, and at the mid temperature, we obtain heating effect. All the process, uh, process uh, doesn't consume any uh, electricity. The principle uh, has been discovered by Michael Faraday almost 200 years ago, the key is flexibly using the principle with advanced working materials to develop novel thermodynamic cycles, new mechanisms, and a new function. We can build closed system for cooling with one evaporator and one condenser. We can build a semi-closed system for water producing with one, only one condenser. And we can build also open system of thermal storage with only the absorption units. So here is some design to date uh, for the use of thermal battery uh, at small scale. Prototypes for 20 watts were demonstrated for temporal cooling scenarios. The system was very well, much, much more, much compact and stable than a PCM a thermal battery system despite its appearance. We can see the state of art of this particular research branch from the schema on the right. The largest application of the thermal battery is to use it for the built environment, especially with the increasing penetration of renewable energy. It is prioritized to find low cost and robust storage solutions which allow us to reduce the energy uh, fluctuation 
uh, while maintaining the same piping and pumping equipment sites. The absorption thermal battery is installed at the demand side, thanks to the nature of high energy density and is more applicable for intraday application than a conventional system. In this way, the thermal battery achieves peak shaving and load shifting with reasonable cost to the end users. We fabricate uh, small proof of concept. We run lab tests and a few tests. We characterize the performance of the Moxon battery. We use complex modeling tool in CFD to capture the phenomena and mechanism of the heat and mass transport. In such an open system, we consider the uh, porosity of absorbance, the fraction uh, of vapor flux, and the intellectual, intermolecular and uh, intramolecular diffusion external. However, the performance of an absorption system battery has never been investigated carefully in a current system design, including whatever shown of the temporal cooling solution. We have the temperature profiles like on the left, which is enabled by the operation uh, of constant temperature flow, very common in the engineering. Since the absorption mechanism involves a complex heat and mass transport, the power output is not linear to the external flow rate, which in fact gives a variable heating and cooling performance. This is not acceptable for the market. It's difficult to measure and it's difficult to price. The researchers and the engineers in the thermal and the civil engineering disciplines just adopted an average value of the performance without further looking to uh, a standardization of the performance of a thermal battery or any type of thermal batteries. This makes a, a state of research on thermal batteries directly far behind the electrochemical batteries. And now we are trying to bridge this gap. Here is a standard characterization method of electrochemical batteries. The C value here represent, uh, refers to how quickly the battery is discharged entirely. For instance, 2C means the battery of one kilowatt hour is discharged in half an hour with a power of two kilowatts. And uh, 0.5C means discharge in, in two hours. This higher, um, the higher the power density is, the less the usable energy density of the materials and also the lower the energy density of the battery. So we use an analogic method to convert uh, all the parameters of our absorption thermal battery to that of an electrochemical, uh, electrochemical uh, battery standardized using the experimental and the modeling characterization techniques. We are able to find the re real performance, the constant power output of the thermal battery and the various operation conditions. As you may say from the screen, uh, the thermal battery, similar to an uh, electrochemical battery, always holds a trade off between the energy density and the power density. The higher uh, power output we produce, the lower energy storage we can use in each cycle. This character is of vital role uh, in the development of a thermal battery. It tells us we must find the optimization performance between stored energy capacity and uh, the operational conditions. The trade-off is related to the material properties and the mechanical design and sizing properties as well. With the obtained energy power performance map now in real conditions, we can finally evaluate the true economic value of such a thermal battery system. We consider a representative household in the Netherlands that has already installed a heat pump system and now faces the question of whether uh, absorption thermal storage has additional value. Note that we use the heat pump to blow up a hot airflow at a higher temperature 
the normal uh, heating needs to charge the thermal battery. The airflow is discrete, the temperature is still conducted to the house uh, for heating use. Here is a profile of heating demand and energy consumption in a typical winter day. Absent of any thermal battery, the household will self-consume the energy, identical to the profile of heating demand despite the fluctuation uh, of electricity price in the spot market. We de develop an um, uh, intelligent control framework to implement the thermal battery in the building heating system. The total energy capacity can be discharged or charged by the heat pump in four hours with maximum power. The control aims to minimize the electricity consumption costs for operating the heat pump. In this framework, we have state variables for the state of charge of the sun battery, space and heating demand uh, determined by weather data and uh, building available properties. We have uh, control signals for the ahead electricity prices. We have constraints from minimum and maximum power of the heat pump and the thermal battery. Now we have the performance of the thermal battery. On the left, we can observe the operation of the battery during the day. The heat pump outputs also change accordingly, which leads to a, a lower consumption of the electricity, as shown on the right hand. With the cost differences, we can easily calculate the maximum allowable LCOE of the thermal battery. With these models and validation, combining the physical mechanism and the optimal control, we can derive many figure of merits to describe the thermal battery performance with high precision. For instance, the loss in the switch between charge and discharge in average is acceptable. More energy has been produced because a thermal battery can harness latent heat from the air. Total energy um, electricity consumption has been saved by 15%. Both energy load and the price, uh, price profile can be moved by a large part as the added value, etc. This thorough evaluation process is indispensable to develop and uh, implement absorption thermal battery in realistic conditions. And to largely deploy this technology in the near future, we must establish standards for the characterization of the performance in order to make more uh, uh, accurately uh, estimation uh, of the cost factors. And to summarize, we have demonstrated how to calculate the figure of merit of a thermal battery uh, more accurately. Mm, and now we know that absorption thermal battery uh, is a promising storage technology to improve energy flexibility, providing high energy and power density. We have cl clarified that the figure of merit uh, are comparable to an uh, electrochemical battery. The trade-off between energy and power density will bond, uh, which were neg uh, neglected uh, in previous research in the areas of civil and thermal engineering. Most um, thermal batteries were generated at high, uh, low temperature can be integrated into various scenarios without additional heating equipment. It's uh, suitable for high shared renewables. Finally, MOF thermal battery can serve for both load shifting and demand shifting. The latter cannot be fulfilled by conventional thermal storage technologies to date. So this is the end of my topic. Uh, thank you very much. I'll be very happy to take questions.